Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 156, the edition where I'm annoyed at life and I'm going to take it out on Clinton Kane. Hello, Lily. It's How are gonna you today? It's going to be a fun one today. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I feel like Clinton Kane has just become like part of our like text conversations <laughs> that we oh, yeah. just like, yeah. constantly allude to him. His mouth in particular. Can we say that? I don't think we could say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we could say that. <laughs> Imagine my delight when I see that Brooke has finally decided to... Well, first of all, should we give a little backstory? Have you seen the Clinton Kane episode? If you haven't, you should definitely go watch. It's, it's a treat. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we do have to give a backstory because if people don't know, they're going to be very lost. Yes, but yes. I will say this was a a fun little FYP serve that I got to share with Lily in real time. So I was scrolling, doom scrolling, if you will, at 3 a.m. as I do. And I saw Brooke come up on my For You Schofield. page with this entire series. Yeah, Schofield, we'll get into it. <laughs> but I sent it to Lily and we got to experience it as they were being posted, like literally in real time. It was great. It would be like experiencing Risa Tisa in real time, except like they're not mm -hmm. as long and it was easier to follow. Guys, if you see me like fidgeting, it's because my microphone situation has been not good. And if you hear any static, it's because my microphone situation has not been good. But one of our girlies, we, by the way, we love when people watch and they're like adults and have significant <laughs> others who have like amazing jobs. We love because a girlie that just with happened connections. Recently. <laughs> Literally. So we got an email from this guy who's like, my fiance was watching and I saw Lily was wearing two <laughs> headphones. Basically like, why is she doing that? <laughs> like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And I explained everything to him and they're sending us a bunch of free equipment. So we're so excited like really about good that. Audio and we will to specify. <laughs> yeah, we have been on the struggle bus. We, you know, we bought everything ourselves. It's the cheaper version of everything. So like we're getting an upgrade, mamas. I feel like someone commented on, they're like, do I hear a clicking noise? Am I insane? I'm like, <gasps> no. You should just gaslight them and be like, yes, you are insane. I don't, don't hear yeah, anything. Absolutely. It's not us. <laughs> the amount of work we do on our audio, guys, just for it to sound pretty shitty is insane. <laughs> I'll just say that. Well, and then when I see people doing their podcast and they're like screaming into the mic and like hitting it with their mouths, I'm like, why is, uh, what, what? <laughs> it's funny we're talking about Brooke because the cancel podcast always comes to mind when Tana and Brooke are talking and they're like going in and out of the mic and it sounds fine well, you and know like, they definitely well, they pay now? audio people <laughs> maybe they maybe money. they do maybe they have someone standing by <laughs> yeah but uh yeah, no they have like producers and stuff they're not filming across the country and like also um have no idea what they're doing mm. yeah anyway back to what we were saying um brooke schofield if you don't know she is the co-host of the canceled podcast with tana mojo uh do we know them i know tana but i've never met brooke same i think she is hilarious and anytime we have covered her which has been actually a decent amount because um she's had quite the <laughs> track record with men well the thing is when she went viral for dating matt rife yeah. I mean, I personally don't find him attractive, but a lot of people do. <laughs> and, you know, that's a little bit different. Clinton Kane is pretty insane because, oh my God, okay. the things people Well, so here, I, I gave this backstory the last okay. time too, but I had known, I'd heard rumblings, mostly from Jesse, about how Brooke Schofield's ex-boyfriend had, is, not had been, he is a pathological liar. And I knew that there was some weird stuff there and that he had lied about like something with his family and all this stuff, but I had never put a face to the name. And then I was scrolling my For You page one day and I... <laughs> It's jarring. It's jarring. And if anyone says it's not, they're lying. But the I'm thing sorry. is, is that I had also already seen him so many times pop up on my preview right. page. And I just didn't make the connection that that was the same person. And mm -hmm. when I did, I was like, what, what is going on? What do you mean? And at the last time I was like, I don't want to be mean. And I still don't want to be mean. And we don't like to comment on people's appearance as much. But... Uh, if he was a great, nice guy, okay, would have been totally period. different. Pick a struggle, though. You know what I mean? It, it has to be said. If you want us to sit here and not acknowledge at all that Brooke Schofield is a gorgeous That's also girl, the thing. and it's he the, it's like, is not a gorgeous man, you know, Visible. yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So yeah. he is talented. Yeah. I don't even know about that part. I, the more I find out about him, the, the less I... <laughs> think that but no i i do like objectively if you didn't know anything about him you would say oh wow he's a good musician okay and he does these really like deep songs about all of his feelings and um a lot of them <laughs> happen to be As inspired people do. well n not quite like he does though because his are inspired by his family members three of them that all died quote unquote within a year mm -hmm. that's very traumatic you might think Except they didn't. No, they're alive. They're actually, I will say, I will say his dad actually did pass away, I believe, in 2020. Oh. 
but his mom and his brother alive and kicking. So um, he has based his, like basically his whole career off making these really emotional songs that he has said in many interviews how that's what his music is often about. It's either about like yeah. relationships, which seems he has a lot of them. We'll get to that. Then mostly though, otherwise it's like these really strong emotions he's felt because he's coping with the loss of his family members. Well, Brooke didn't even come out with it right out. And she was actually like, she gave him so much more grace than I ever would have. I know. It actually kind of annoyed me a little. I know. I was like, come on, girl. <laughs> Just like, give, give us a little more. I think first came out that like she found out about all of his lies in like, I want to say it was like November of like 2022, maybe. Yeah. And then several months later, she started finally like sharing little tidbits here and there. And ironically, actually, Tana always was trying to be like, you should do a Risa Tisa series. Like when Risa Tisa came oh, out, yeah. that was what kind of got her to talk about it a little more. And Tana was like, I want a full 50 part series, like give it to us. And I was all on board for that. I was like, please, I want to know everything about it. And that was even before I did my own deep dive and found out so much more like contradictions and like he's just a lying piece of shit. Well, I think that for context, if you didn't see our Clinton Kane episode again, you have to see it because there's a lot of yeah, we can't do the whole background. You need to know. But what I will say, the closest he's ever gotten to addressing this is he kind of alluded to the fact that basically, like, my mom's dead to me, kind of thing. You know what no, I mean? No, 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 no. Like we're estranged. Isn't that the note he wrote on his Instagram? But it was basically that his biological mom and him were estranged. But like, how dare anyone question any of the stuff he said? Because when he said his mom died, that was apparently a motherly figure that was not his biological mom. But he oh, got claimed it, got it. That that's what it was. This was the woman that raised him. Which, when I did my deep dive, I found the biological mom's Facebook, who is not dead. And also, in interviews, he didn't distinguish between the two. He very much lumped the stories together. And, which is insane. And absolutely Because, like, for instance, like, I've said it a, a million times. I'm like, I have a stepdad who is, like, a second father to me. I would never just be like, my dad died. Like, yeah. I would say, you know, my stepdad, who was, like, a father to me, much like my father. Like, you have to say all of it. You can't just be like, my mom's dead. And it wasn't That's like not he accurate. let people believe it. It was like, no, no, he very much said that in interviews. Pray to God and everything, every, like, everything. Who is Chicken Tendies about? About my mom. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm, that makes me so happy that really your your certifiably biggest song is not about A some girl. fleeting relationship. Yeah, no, it's about my mom. A Gosh. fleeting relationship about my mom. Oh. So it's kind of the... Do you think you we consider that a on and off, wishy-washy, not consistent yeah. relationship? Yeah. Yeah. By who's, is it your fault? Her fault? Her fault. Really? Her own thing, yeah. She's just like, she was a pastor, you know, every day she lived by like, oh, like, pray to God and everything, every, like, everything, every worry you have in life and every, every negative thing, just leave on to God and blah, blah, blah. And she got like so engulfed in like following God that she can't, we can't, I like, me and my two brothers like. You can't talk to her. Yeah. No. Is that sad? Make you sad? Yeah, definitely does make me sad. Yeah, for sure. Especially when it comes like Christmas time. Like I get so f***ing depressed. It's like, it's because it's like, oh, cool. Well, my mom's off to praying. And ch <laughs> yeah, she's at church. Yeah, she's doing her own thing. Chicken tendies is actually, I mean, chicken tendies is actually about losing my mom. And I had a talk with my publicist about explaining how to explain because I wasn't ready to talk about it le yet last year about like losing my mom um, but she she passed away like two three weeks after th after the song came out I mean chicken tennis is actually about losing my mom but she she passed away like two three weeks after the song came out after chicken tennis came out but that song was actually about losing my mom I, my publicist and I found a way to like make it seem real enough because it's still real like losing her to religion but i have we, we do you you did you did kind of lose her before she was gone right because you didn't have much of a relationship with no, her no no it was all gone but it was already complicated before so there's a lot to fucking unpack there yeah <sighs> yeah there's four songs on the album about my mom your mom didn't get to hear chicken tendies did she no i don't know no she didn't no yeah she was already like gone before that.
And he doesn't have an explanation for the brother, from what I'm aware. No, right? I don't think we've that ever heard anything about that. But one of my <laughs> favorite things is also not even from the interviews, because a lot of people I know even, actually, a few housekeeping items to go over. One, I incorrectly said that they dated for years. But um, yeah. do you want to know the reason I thought that? Which, like, I take full blame, shouldn't have trusted this source. Oh, God. You remember Whoa. Matt Reif did the stand-up routine where he is referencing this? He says oh. in it that they dated for years, and, like, she reacts to it. Like, she, no one ever clarified that, so I think I just... Just heard that right. and assumed that that was it. Very similar thing. Lied about being ex-military, but also lied about his entire family being dead and lied about him being Australian. He was faking an Australian accent, get this, for four years. <laughs> so I was wrong. Sorry. Me. <laughs> I think that was the only thing I really got wrong. Oh, and that they like lived together, but like technically they did, as she explains, because it was during COVID and they like quarantined together. They didn't like have a house together or something, but yeah. But they definitely dated. That part's true. Yeah. And for not a month. Yeah. Like it was, a, it, it, no, it was a like a long relationship. Yeah. So then the only other thing that I did get some shit over is during my deep dive, when I had found all of his biological family's Facebooks mm -hmm. and found out that they were very much alive, I had referenced this one post that I found on his old Facebook from like 2017, which everyone was like, he was a child, how dare you? Yeah. Blah, blah. Uh, I would like to clarify, he was like months away from turning 18, which like, yes, he was a minor, but like by the time you're 18, that's not that long. I mean, he was like 23 or something. Like it wasn't that long ago. And in right. it, he refers to his mom as his best friend, how she sacrificed so much for him and his brothers and all this stuff. Could it have been performative? Absolutely. I'm not saying they had a great relationship, but it was just like, it didn't line up with all the stuff that he was saying where it's like, we've been estranged I and we never like talked. I feel like that's not necessarily a... fair to say that like you shouldn't have brought that up because it's extremely relevant when number one, at least one person that we know is not dead, he has not, like he has no explanation for that. But then the other person is definitely alive and his explanation is like, well, I wasn't talking about her. Lily bringing up that they're best friends and he's absolutely talking about his biological mom. Yeah. I feel like that's relevant no matter how young he was. It's like, let's look into this relationship because he's obviously lying about it. So we have to figure out for ourselves. And honestly, that wasn't even like the nail in the coffin. Like literally it was like a ton of other stuff and it was just supporting it too. No. But also one thing that you actually almost made me cut out because we didn't want me to be offensive was because oh. I was like, Wait, also, in a note where he talks about his family, he says that his mom is Norwegian. And I was like, she's Filipino, right? Yeah, well, I was like, first of all, he is not, he does not, I mean, maybe sometimes you, all, not all the traits are coming forth and you can't really, no, no. He does not yeah. look at all Norwegian. Norwegian people are like blonde and pale. So yeah. then I hear in Brooke's story that we're gonna go over a few highlights in a bit. She says at one point that he said his mom is blonde and Norwegian. Guess who is fully Filipino? With like a yeah. stereotypical Filipino last name, like everything about them. Yeah. He grew up in the Philippines, not Australia. Quick correction there. Um, I will be the first to admit I'm really, really not great at geography. Apparently Brunei, where he grew up, is not in the Philippines. While both the Philippines and Brunei are both located in Southeast Asia, um, Brunei is actually its own independent country that is about 745 miles away from the closest islands of the Philippines. So Brunei is known for having a very large, prominent Philippine Filipino population, so it's not shocking that Clinton's family would reside there. And um, that concludes our geography lesson for the day. Class dismissed. And another thing to note that we did discuss in the Clinton Kane episode is that he would lie to multiple people that he would date. Like there was this one girl that came out and said like, he told me his brother was dead. Mm -hmm. And then like three days later, or a week later, told him again, like my brother died. And then he had, he had to like backtrack and be like, he was terminal. So I just like already said, <laughs> like, you would not refer to your terminally ill. I think he texted me being like, call me back or something like that. So I call him back and I'm like, okay, it must be like an emergency. I call him and he's like, I just found out my brother just died. I'm like so sad. I'm shattered like I'm I'm so upset this and that and of course I cancel the rest of my work day and I go straight to see him because I'm like oh my god I'm so sorry and then it dawned on me I was like oh when I met him four days before then he had told me his brother just passed away and we were talking about it and I, I realized like wait didn't you say your brother died like four days ago allegedly and he was like Oh, I I found out four days ago he was terminal, so I just like accepted him dead at that point already. And but now I found out he's dead, and I was like, allegedly. So now I was like, oh, okay. Which I obviously don't think someone's lying about that. So I just was like, oh, okay. You're not gonna you're not gonna pry when you think someone's family just uh, murders passed away. So like you have to understand, this is a person who's exploiting the death of his family 
or non-death or whatever you figurative yeah. death. Who knows? And when you do that and you're a public figure and you profit off of it, people are going to look into your shit, whether you like it or not. Which like, I definitely did way too much. But one of the actual nail in the coffins for me that was like, oh my God, are you stupid? Like, I, that's what I don't get with people like this that lie about so many things. How do you keep track of it all? And the answer is, you, you don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, hiccups here. Have you ever met a pathological liar? They do not remember a lot of times. And then once you bring it up, they'll just kind of like finagle up. their way around it. <laughs> yeah, but that's what he did. Well, we'll see Brooke explain it, but it seems like that's what he did to Brooke a lot. And if she brought up something, it's always very much like, how dare you? Much like he did with the mom thing where he's like, I wasn't talking about my biological mom. How dare you all think that? Which, like, you could watch the interview back, and he definitely is. But also, <laughs> one of the craziest ones, because I went back and watched the episode last night, and I had found this interview he did, where in the interview, he gets asked about this post that he made. It's right after Chicken Tendies comes out. That's one of his songs. I it's called the, Chicken Tendies. I hate the name of that. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't. Um, <laughs> so he has released this song. That's the one he says is about his mom past. I, he says it's about his mom, but then also but he says that he wrote it. it three weeks later. And then he's like, I didn't realize it was about my mom, but it was. But it, like no, that whole thing doesn't make sense anyway. Chicken Tendies. Does that song have new meaning to you today than it did when you first wrote it? Yeah. I didn't know it was about my mom. When you were writing it? Yeah, I didn't. I had no clue. When did you realize that? We were writing it and... It was the first ever time where we were writing about an imaginary girl. We didn't know. I was writing with Steve and we didn't like, we were writing it like, because it all just came very naturally and it was very, like very organic and we were just writing and everything just came like whatever. And then we had the idea and I was like, who the fuck are we writing about right now? Two weeks later when I got the bounce, I was, I was sitting in my bathtub, you know what I mean? Got my candles, <laughs> got my book, you know what I mean? Got my little ducky on the fucking floating in the water. Um, and then I, I had a speaker and I played Chicken Tendies and I started crying out of nowhere. It was like all just like very random. And I was like, why the fuck? What, why is this happening? Like this song is about like someone random. And then I listened to the lyrics. I hope he treats you better than ever because you deserve the world times two on a simple Sunday afternoons. I never had any Sunday afternoons with anyone besides my mom. And all the lyrics, like, like, I, I, I was writing it and I didn't even know who the fuck it was about. But, like, all the lyrics were so about my mom. And about losing her to religion. Yeah. But so he had posted right after that came out this very dramatic notes app thing on his Instagram and Twitter where it was like, I lost someone that was like one of the closest people to me in Did the world. You? In this interview, they acknowledge that and they go like, are, like, are you doing okay? And they don't go like, who died? Because the post was very vague about like, he just lost someone close to him. But then as time went on, he did confirm that it was supposedly his mom that had passed. And one of the craziest things was that they referenced that but then knowing that that was then about supposedly his mom, earlier in the interview, he gets asked about like the type of music he's doing and if he, cause he grew up in the church and like, would he ever consider doing like gospel music and stuff? And he goes, maybe to appease my mom. Who well, he's also From said- the grave? Was a pastor. <laughs> so no, but he, res he says it in the present tense. He doesn't acknowledge in the later question that that is his mom that passed. But then also I'm like, but this interview came and I'm like doing a little math in my head. I'm like, wait, so you're going to do it for her? And then he says something about like, uh, she asked, are you always going to write these sad songs? And that one got me because he in an interview was like, yeah, I think about it every day. Like, d did my mom ever get the chance to hear my music? I don't know if she heard. I don't know. The thing is like, I always wonder this every day. Like... I wonder if she even got to hear anything that I made. Because she was still, she was alive when I started, like, the YouTube series and yeah. stuff like that. I don't know if she ever, like, heard it or, like, because I, I, I didn't, we didn't talk, like, before she died, like, we hadn't spoken in, like, a year or something or, like, a year and a half. Like, no text, no call, no nothing. It was kind of just, like, you do your own thing. It's always been that way. So I'm, like, kind of, like, accustomed to it, but... I always think about that. Like, did you hear any of my music? You know what I mean? Like my, the thing, the, the, the thing, the, the passion, the thing that I'm doing with my life. Like it's, it's kind of like sad to think about it sometimes. Sounds like she did, Clinton. 
what are you talking about? <laughs> like, so the level of like just gymnastics he has done. Yeah, to... it has layers. Yeah. Like he added onto it over time. And overall, when you look at it all, it doesn't make sense. And it does very much lean towards he lied about his entire, well, not his entire family, but the majority Most of, of his immediate mm. family dying, which is so insane. And also that he grew up in Australia when they grew up in the Philippines. And there's very much photo evidence to confirm that throughout like all of the years of these Facebook posts. How long did he live in Australia? Not even, they like went on trips to Australia. Maybe no, later on that. in life, he like moved there for a brief amount of time. I know he like jumped around and was supposedly homeless. Who knows if that's true. But he was never like a long-term resident of Australia. That changes things. Cause I do remember that I stood by the fact in our episode that like I take on accents wherever I go. It's an issue. It's a maybe a mental illness that I haven't explored. But oh my God, wait, it's funny. it is something that happened. Because remember one of my We Love the Internets, it was um the girl, what's her name? Crap. The really pretty no blonde idea. girl. I, I fuck, I would know her name if I saw it. But um it was the girl that posted and like referenced Brooke because Brooke has said that she does this too. And then I think it's in her series that she posts eventually. We're gonna get to it. I'm sorry, a lot of backstory here. But I know. Um, yeah. Brooke said that she assumed that he was going going in and out of the Australian accent, not because he was faking it, but because he must have been mirroring her American accent because that's what she does. And I'm like, oh. So she was just like mm -hmm. assuming it was. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. She didn't think it was anything nefarious about no, it. No, yeah. yeah. But anyway, the reason we are gathered here today is because Brooke decided to go buck wild and all it took to make this happen was one oh, singular it was enough. almost mention. Yeah, no, it was enough. She was waiting for this moment, but like we said, she's been holding back a lot, not wanting to share everything about Clinton Kane. So he basically has been promoting this one song, this one single of his. And honestly, I do have to say, I understand it's how TikTok has made it for independent artists to have to promote their music like this. You get but some I find more it so creative noxious. options though. Like well, it just bothers me that they will like tease one single part of it yeah. for months and months and months on end and be like, my manager will won't let me release this song. And then he'll be like, but do you like it? Maybe my manager will let me release it if you tell him to. I'm like, do you even have a manager? It just feels like so annoying, but he did that. And one of the many, many TikToks of him promoting this song was him alluding to Brooke, which was a big mistake, my friend. I'm sure he knows that now. We, we have to mute the the thing because he'll definitely copyright the You're show welcome, by the way. It's not bad, but it's it's not great. So um, it anyway, sounds like everything he's ever put out. He also, important to note that before this, he very much like does not mention her because she started talking about it a while ago. Like it's come up several times and been like in yes. the trending cycle and he just must block comments or he very much avoids it. And I guess he has said, somewhere I don't know where that like he alludes to her being crazy hmm rich but so then out of nowhere I don't know what possessed him to do this because I feel like you would know that, that like <laughs> girl what possessed him is the cloud goblin he literally just wanted like the attention around his music and, and it they've worked. been so successful lately because they, like their tour and she's blowing up Matt Rife like all this yeah, stuff I guess but like it also worked if you look at the we'll talk about the effect of it after but what happened after this is that people are using this sound to make fun of him which ultimately is good for him it's kind of a Jojo Siwa move which I know she comes yeah. back into this in a minute actually <laughs> I have a reference oh but, god um, no please so June 24th uh, we're filming this the 27th so this is three days ago he decides that he's going to play with fire and poke the bear and post this <laughs> so often i feel like he's usually alone but sometimes he like pretends like other people are in the room maybe they are but like i've seen those he kind of yeah. like laughs to like it's always just like oh, look how fun and carefree i am well this one it's him drinking um like uh, out of a wine glass with ice in it which like hmm like maybe sangria I've or something. I've definitely done that before. I, don't know. I can't even But hear. um <laughs> can't knock him. That's the least of my concerns. It's him casually just drinking in a kitchen where it says when you've been over the relationship for 2 years but she won't stop yapping. Sir, the odd Audacity. Like, oh my God, you wouldn't be able to shut me up. I'd be yapping so much. Are you kidding? I know why he was doing this for promotion and to like, you know, gather some commotion around his song. But when I say that Brooke was like, oh, I'll show you yapping, motherfucker. I will show you <laughs> that's a bitch like, that's fluent in yapping. Are you crazy? Yes, obviously you are, Clinton. But like, oh my God, <laughs> what kind of move was this that you thought wasn't no, going to blow honestly, up in though, your face? I'm so thrilled because he has unleashed the beast and I'm here for it. Oh, so the reason I... <laughs> 
<laughs> brought up the other people. It starts with just a mysterious shoulder in the bottom left corner that oh. very awkwardly, uh -huh. like, just, like, shuffles off screen in the most weird, unnatural way possible. To the point that I almost, I was like, did he green screen himself, like, moving out of the... Sh Lily, he stop. So <laughs> I, well, I, unfortunately, he didn't. <laughs> I obviously <laughs> take the time to download it and do a little zoom in because I'm like, if he fucking green screen to have another, I would, that would just chef's kiss. That would just give us so much more. And while I have to say, unfortunately, that was not the case. <laughs> Do you know what I saw when I zoomed in? No, I'm scared. What is it? I zoom in and see <laughs> it, zippers open. <laughs> That's so petty, Lily. It's so stupid, but like, he's just trying to act so cool. And he's like, yeah, I look know. at me. For <laughs> sure, it looks goofy as fuck. And also, it's just hilarious to see Lily's Google Doc because it's like, this is like exhibit B on her doc. It says, fly unzipped. <laughs> Zoom in. Oh my god, I can't show you the other ones yet because I that don't want to so give it away. That is so fucking funny. So, I, I just picture you being like, uh -huh. <laughs> screenshot. No, literally, I'm like, I see a shadow of the person. I'm like, damn it, it's not. But then I was like, oh, oh I missed something. Because also, he just like, he would. Yeah, but also, no, yeah, it, you're so right. Like, he's leaning against that that counter just like, oh, this fucking like, idiot. So cool. Bitch, zip up your pants, oh my god. loser. Literally, I can't. So then um, he like laughs off to his apparently real friend that was there mm -hmm. allegedly like, oh, <laughs> and then cheers is everyone and then it cuts to the most uh, i mean in the last episode i think we briefly maybe touched we probably cut most of it out but we briefly touched on his um performance tactics seizure dance moves basically is that allowed can we say that i mean it's just that he moves in a very <laughs> like could call erratic it the way. shakes Maybe. Sure. That's what people in the search are calling it because it's literally oh. coming up. Clinton Kane shakes in the search of TikTok. Yeah. It's been acknowledged how much he uh, seemingly vibrates as he sings, we should say. And you know, I brought up Jojo Siwa earlier. Yeah. Wait, what's a tie-in? <laughs> it's because someone commented on this and was like, okay, he's giving Jojo Siwa in this. Just, you know, her like beginning of the movie. Oh, the, this one? Yeah, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Very reminiscent. I'll do a side by side for the edit. But guys, they have compilations of his shakes that I shit you not will rock you to the core. I'm not even joking. It's like your concern. You're like, is something, is, are you okay? It's his like, like what's performance what's vibe, but it's like, it's not giving like avant garde so Freddie Mercury. Yeah. It's yeah, giving yeah. like, are you okay? Do we need to call an ambulance? Like, what's happening? <laughs> Literally. So I would love to be able to go run to the comment section because you know it would be amazing, except. But um, first, he curiously limited comments because we'll get to Brooke's series in a minute, but it blew up overnight. I would die to see what words he had to filter out because when I gradual. tell you the only ones I saw were hi and a heart, those are the only ones that made it past. That was late stage. I caught it as Brooke was uploading her series. He didn't have any hate comments, but he had a lot of comments that did look like bot comments, like praising his song. You know, like, oh my God, like, I think oh. one specifically said, like, they can never make me hate you, you know, our favorite comment. So he did have some of those. Now all comments are turned off. Uh, because of what we're yeah, about no, to show Yeah, no, I, I have a screenshot of like when there was like 22 of them, but it's like his videos definitely get more than that usually. Now it has gone from um, like limited comments, which like some of them only had like three, like from the last few days, one of them had one that was just a heart. I'm like, dude, what did you even, like that's extensive filtering. Yeah. But then now they are notably completely turned off. This video has also like five times the amount of views is his normal ones because obviously people are going to make fun of it. Let's fast forward though to Brooke's response. Yeah, so that's what we're he all gathered that here today. June for. 24th at 7 p.m. about. June 26th, I don't know if it took her this long to see it or if it took her this long to just like build up the momentum and by this long I mean um two days. Not even one full day because she posted this first one. <laughs> Two in the morning, two thirty in the morning, and and this I was, was sat the introduction at the edge of my bed. I this. <laughs> literally because you know she, we've been waiting for yeah. it to happen. We mm -hmm. knew it was gonna come eventually, but this was what the, she he poked the bear and the bear pop back. <laughs> we choose the bear. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't play it either because it's his song and she's singing along to it and she just looks 
maniacal. <laughs> I love it so much. Like you could just see the look on her face is like, oh, you, you little <laughs> you're worm. fucking around and you are finding People out. People have been calling him a lizard. And I do think that's funny. And I stand by that. <laughs> I've called I several men that I've dated a kind. lizard. And it's valid in certain scenarios, especially when they cheat on you and lie to you about traumatic shit. Exactly. So, and yeah. then call you crazy afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, so she goes, the rage bait is working. Please stream this song. <laughs> All proceeds go to his mom? That's false info. All proceeds do not go to his mom. So immediately people start losing their shit and she wastes no time before she starts uploading what ends up being, I think, completely to this day, 17 videos, but it's like a 13 part, 14 part series. It's insane. This has so many likes. I literally was watching this when it had like 40 likes. I just saw someone post an article how brands need to take note because this is social media genius because it's like she had people on the edge of their seat. I'm like, I mean, I don't think everyone can really capitalize on this kind of narrative. Yeah, it doesn't uh-huh. happen to everyone. Yeah. But oh my God, she would share like just enough that you're like, fucking post the next <laughs> one. And like everyone was literally like refreshing and the top comments would have like 5,000 likes in the mm-hmm. first minute. So this is... Part one. We're not going to play all of them because it's not super long, but it's uh, maybe I'll put like a highlight reel together of some of the best parts. But I have my favorites pulled. Someone comments on that last one and just says, Brooke, full send, please. And she goes, yes, (laughs) as you requested. No, seriously, part one. Who the fuck did I marry? Um, Also, I love that she calls it who the fuck did I marry? For (laughs) clarification, she did not marry Clinton. No. (laughs) But Risa Tisa, you get it. I am trying to be a little bit less psycho on TikTok because... Obviously, I had my little meltdown the other day, and that was probably, like, enough for this week. (laughs) But when I opened my phone today to a million texts from all my friends of this TikTok that Clinton Kane had posted saying, what did he say? He said, like, when I've been over the relationship for two years and she just can't stop yapping about it, which, first of all, hilarious. Like, no shit, I can't stop yapping. (laughs) But (laughs) the nerve. Now, obviously, we broke up two years ago, okay? And that was a very, very different time in my life. I was, first of all, unmedicated, okay? And that is a very, Mm -hmm. very important factor in this story because I get so many comments that are like, Brooke, what on earth were you going through? And I agree. (laughs) I really don't know. That was a different girl. I was bamboozled. Mm -hmm. Now, I get a lot of comments about his appearance and the way he shakes. Okay, <laughs> and those are two things that I'm gonna leave off limits for my story time because those are not off limits, by the way. It and it's obvious it doesn't even need to be addressed. Believe it or not, that was not even really the problem. The fact <laughs> of the matter is, I ended up in a relationship with this man because I was a fan, honestly. I knew of him because of his music. I loved his song Chicken Tendies or whatever. Tana and I would literally blast it on a loop at our old house and like we were obsessed with it, okay? So randomly one day I get a DM from this artist, it's Clinton Kane. The other misinformation I spread was that like Zach Sang introduced them. I guess that he didn't, but they were friends. So they like, once Zach Sang found out that she was hanging out with him or like talking to him, then he like encouraged her. Yeah, I think Brooke literally says that one of the like main things that made her date him was Zach Sang. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't introduce her. He just like basically said, you need to date Clinton Kane. Like you guys are basically perfect for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all hung out together and stuff. So I misinterpreted that as them meeting, but he just slid into the DMs, I guess. And I remember telling Tana like, oh my God, like how funny he just messaged me. And he starts just like, asking me questions whatever and he asks if i want to go to dinner and i'm like i'm looking at his profile and i don't know if i want to go to dinner okay but off limits i'm replying anyway and he asks he's like, what about tomorrow I'll been there girly pop i go what the fuck i didn't know he lived in vegas so i say no and that's the end of that she's so, so real that's like that. how she cuts it up it's literally just like she gives a little bit and then just leaves you be like, well, what happened next? <laughs> Let's do the next one just to show like how they like progress yeah, into the a relationship, yeah, but then we'll skip it. ahead. Yeah. Okay. Part two, who the fuck did I marry? Like I said, he lived in Vegas. So I obviously was not going to go to dinner with him because he's a stranger. Okay. But he persisted. All right. Of course, of the next few months, he would slide up on all my stories, message me constantly. He, some would call him obsessed, honestly, but... What am I going to do? I'm not going to fly to meet a stranger, okay? But one day, I get a DM where he says, Hey, 
I have a show tomorrow in LA, like, would you want to come? And again, I loved his music. So I was like, absolutely. I will definitely come because it's like, that's so much less pressure. I don't want to go to dinner with this man. Like I said, I saw his profile, but I want to see the show. So I ask BB to come with me and we get ready to go. Okay. Remember so specifically the outfit that I wore, because again, this guy has been messaging me so much online that I'm like, I know he like loves me. So I wore the ugliest outfit you could find. Like BB knows, I said it to her. I was like, I just want like to look as unattractive. The way I thought she was gonna say like, I wanted to look really hot. No, no, <laughs> that- she was like, no, no, I wanted to look so unattractive because I did not want this to be a thing. Oh my God. Like to him as possible, because I just don't want that to be the vibe. <laughs> All right, she and I go to dinner and we go to the show. It's amazing, okay? He was amazing. I don't know what's happened since then, but <laughs> he was slaying at the time. <laughs> After the show, we go upstairs. I think he was at like El Rey Theater or something. And everybody's like mingling. A few of my friends were there. I remember Justin Cover were there. Markel was there. Our other topic for the One of my best friends, Justin Horowitz, was there. Like I was like mingling with friends and he like came over to me and started talking to me, whatever. And we like hit it off. And I'm going to tell you guys something that you might not believe, but he looked really good. <laughs> Honestly, he was way taller than I thought and he had Off a really limits. cool outfit on and I was like, you know what? He's not as bad as I thought he was, okay? So we end the night, I go home, nothing happens and he texts me after the show and he's like, would you want to come back tomorrow? And I had an amazing time. I like loved the show. So I was like, you know what? I'll go back. Amari also loved his music. So I texted Amari and I was like, would you want to come? Would you wanna come with me to see Clinton Kane tomorrow? And whatever. I bring Amari the next day, okay? Same show, we do the same thing after, and then Amari and I go back on his bus, okay? And honestly, we had such a good time. Like, we're like cracking up on the bus, we're with a bunch of friends. Amari's having the best time, I'm having the best time. He's funny, he's cool, he's like charismatic. I'm like, you know what, like, maybe, Maybe he's not that bad, okay? We all get off the bus and go to the club. We all get super drunk and me and him end up like making out. We're like very much together at the oh. club and that was the start of something very horrible. I don't <laughs> know if it's in your like highlights where you put, but she mentions once that they like made out on the beach and she was like, she described it as traumatic. <laughs> fucking made me laugh because honestly i've been there i've been there girl i have made out with as the jersey shore men would describe some grenades i i surely have and i look at it now and all that was going on in my brain was like pure justification because number one i'm not shallow like if we have a good vibe i'm gonna go with that like i don't give a shit but i justified dating any man like any man in my presence i was like yeah we could be married i think that would work i think we would be in love yeah because mm -hmm. also personalities can make up for oh, maybe girl. a lack of conventional good looks literally i know men that are not conventionally attractive and their personality has made them hot like super hot that's happened a million times to me i guess now the kids are saying they're riz i was gonna say what's like Ugh. a less douchey way to say swag because like that like they're they just have game like, like yeah they just yeah. are like smooth and they're charismatic and it really it gets the people going like it does something and especially inside of musicians you. like well not even just musicians like men with confidence or people with confidence yeah. they really can get to you quick but this seems like he maybe i don't know just faked that or something or I don't know. Well, and that's, I was going to say, I mean, like, I can't say I fully understand because I really don't, but I, I've never <laughs> been there. I've never made out yeah. with Clinton Kane on the beach. So I <sighs> cannot say I relate, but I can. But bless her heart. I get it. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Like, I understand where she's coming from. <laughs> um, we'll watch one more and then we'll skip ahead several. Okay, part three, who the fuck did I marry? All right. So because this is important. Club, he and I went alone to a little diner in LA called Mel's Diner. It's 24 hours, you can go after the club, get fries, shakes, whatever. And he and I order literally every single thing on the menu and we sit there for like four hours and just talk, okay? And this is the point where he tells me about what had happened to him in the year prior, all right? This would have been, I guess, 2020, like during COVID, okay? He tells me his mom, his dad, 
and his brother all died in the same year, okay? Which is fucking horrible. Like, obviously, just unimaginable. So I'm, like, blown away. I knew that his mom had died because he had openly talked about, like, how one of his songs was about her and stuff. But I had no idea about the rest of his family. So I was like, holy shit. To this day, I don't think we know what, like, he claims, like, how any of them died. I've yet to hear explanation. I mean, right. not that that's required if someone's parents died, but his didn't. So, like, I'm... I feel like if you're dating someone and they say your family died, you'd probably tell them how. Oh, absolutely. And I've had, like, some pretty deep, like, first date conversations with people yeah. where, like, stuff came up and, like, I lost my dad when I was really young. So it yeah. was, like, that comes up. And also, like, I've had guys, like, literally, like, start basically, not, like, sobbing, but, like, <laughs> yeah. tear up a little talking about their family. And notice I'm not dating them because we were like probably trauma bonding <laughs> off the first date and it didn't work out. It doesn't even sound like that was really happening here. I feel like if he lost his three out of um, five, I believe, family members a year ago, not even a full year ago. Why are we sitting like, and talking about this over cheese fries at Mel's Diner? It feels yeah, dystopian. like it seems pretty yeah. insane. Yeah. Holy shit, first of all. And I feel like I completely changed my opinion about him because I'm like, at this point, I'm thinking he's just like this weirdo sliding into my DMs and now he's very like human to me. Cause I'm like, oh my God, I cannot believe you could overcome something like that. Like that's insane. This is very important to the story, okay? Because I need you guys to understand how I ended up in this scenario, <laughs> all right? Then he starts telling me how he got into music. He's telling me how he was homeless and he would backpack around Europe, like literally sleep on benches and busk like in parks to make money and he got discovered, whatever. And then obviously I guess I'm in love came out and he was really successful from that song. But I'm just looking at this guy like I have never met anybody like you because first of all, I could never be touring a year after like that kind of extreme tragedy, first of all. Second of all, you would never catch me dead sleeping on a bench on purpose. So I was like, this guy's really like special. He's really special. One more, okay, sorry. Part four, who the fuck did I marry? Okay, so we had this whole night at this diner. We talked forever, and I got to know a lot about him, okay? He told me all about how he had grown up in Australia, in Perth, Australia. He talked about how he grew up, like, super wealthy in, like, an eight-bedroom house on the beach in Australia. His mom was a pastor. He said she was a pastor at... Hillsong United, which is like one of the biggest churches, I guess, in Australia. And everywhere. No, girl. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, that's like Madison, literally one of the biggest churches here. I loved because I was like technically pre-med when I was in college also. I didn't graduate, but it doesn't matter. So I was like, oh my God, we have that in common. Like, this is like a really well-rounded, like amazing guy. Okay? Also, by everything I've looked into and heard, I think that some of that might be true. Like, I think that he did like backpack around Europe and like... Maybe, I don't know if he was, like, homeless, but I think, like, that kind of stuff, yes. This eight-bedroom house on the beach in Australia? Mm. Never happened. No. 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 And he didn't, didn't grow up in Australia. Australia. We know that and for Like sure. I said, he doesn't live in L.A. So the next night, he calls me, and he's like, listen, I have a date planned for us. I'm picking you up at eight, whatever. And he does. Okay? We go on this date. It's, like, a beautiful restaurant, whatever. We have the best time. We talk forever. We go to the beach. Yada, yada. I go home. And the next day, he calls me and he says, I am so sorry and I'm so afraid to tell you, but I just got on set for my music video and I tested positive for COVID. Obviously, I had just like had this whole extravagant date with him the night before. I would 100% have COVID. We were like making out on the beach the whole night, which is like traumatizing, but true. Okay, so I'm like, this man gave me COVID. And he's like, there's nothing I can do. I'm so sorry. But like, obviously we both have it. So I'm quarantining at the one hotel if you want to come and stay with me. So I was like, I mean, like, fuck. Like, I have COVID now. I have two roommates. Like, guess I got to go. I don't know. Again, I'm medicated. <laughs> I show up to the hotel, okay? And I move in with the man. So we'll stop there in terms of the like progression of their relationship. But she basically goes into like 
from that day on, they were together every day, which I think for the foreseeable future. A lot of people can relate to, especially around the COVID, like in 2020. I was going to say, how crazy is it? Like the Risa Tisa, her whole story was very much like it wouldn't have happened if COVID didn't happen. Really? I don't remember that aspect. together super soon because of COVID. Dude, I feel like COVID fucked so many people over. (laughs) I mean- literally Mm -hmm. but then also just like forcing people to quarantine together that had no business quarantining together and then they ended up together and it was disastrous it got people to kind of let their guard down and be like well i guess like Mm -hmm. because you'd rather not be alone and also i have to ask she doesn't clarify i'm like Brooke, did you get tested? Did you actually have COVID? Did he make that up? Oh, good point. He might have, honestly, because he seems like the type. But what I will say is a lot of people figured around that time, if one person had COVID and you were exposed to it, they thought that you would get it. That's not always true. I've literally experienced people who live in the same house and they get COVID and the other people who live in the house don't get it. So well, it depends. That's on why I have to ask if he actually had it. Because if she didn't get tested and just assume. She and doesn't describe like, oh, that they were, were like pre- very sick together. I was going to say, because it doesn't sound like they were particularly symptomatic. So I'm yeah. like, oh my God, did he just do that to like get you locked into a quarantine with him? Girl, I would have. Yeah, I would definitely. Because like it wouldn't put it past doubt. him. Fast forward, they were together all the time. And I guess he used to like love going on trips and they went to Joshua Tree and that's where they had like their first blowout fight. And it was simply because she was on her phone while they were eating dinner, which it's like, yeah, I know some people are like, don't be on your phone while you're eating dinner. But when you've been with the man for like the last however many, I mean, she literally had been with him for days at that point, but like they had spent all their time together. I understand if someone's like ignoring you and not paying attention to what you're saying, like you're talking to them and they literally refuse to acknowledge you because they're on their phone. But if someone's checking their phone after being with you for every waking hour, maybe just let them check it. Like it's fine. Well, and then not only to get mad about it, but like, like then have the reason be that his mom used to ignore him and like how dare she do this because it's triggering for him and it's like I, if that's I don't know if we need to do you maybe need to work through that yeah yeah like I, I don't know it's a little much so she said that that was their first blowout fight but it happened a lot we have a recording of one later and it's pretty top notch fast forward they were dating he she found out he lied about his age and that's the only thing he ever really like came forward and only after she brought it up which i think it's nuts it's she found out because they got pulled over and he gives the officer the id and the officer recites his birthday back to him and she's like that's not correct (laughs) she said it made him like four years younger than he was supposed to be and she thought he was like one year younger and somehow she overlooked it but she points out because he then his excuse was that it was a fake id not only does she point out who has a fake id to make them look four years younger (laughs) like that's what the fuck like that's not a thing but then also you can't give a fake id to a cop like there's so many problems and also he wasn't driving his car so there's a lot of red flags up front but she oh yeah she had thought it was his car but then he said it's not my car like when he read the registration back it was someone else's car yeah so just like interesting weird stuff nothing like realizing that he had faked his parents and brother's death but that comes later so um the craziest part is that the reason they end up breaking up is not because of all of his lies and bullshit and like getting in weird fights. It's because she finds out that he had been like aggressively cheating on her despite spending like all their time together. So we're fast forwarding to part 13. There's only uh, 15 total, <laughs> only. All right, part 13, lucky for him, I wanna go to bed soon. But <clears throat> I will spare you guys the details of how I found out that I was getting cheated on, okay? But boy, Why? was that. Yeah, I was like, no, tell us all the Y'all details. Y'all have seen it. Like, was I wrong to think I didn't really have to worry about that? <laughs> it's truly amazing what he was able to accomplish. But <laughs> he was, in fact, cheating on me with so many people. Like, literally. And like I said, we spent every single second together. So if I, like, matched up the timelines, it would be like we were, like, laying in bed watching Bridgerton. And he'd be, like, sending a dick pic to somebody else. So that was something. And that is ultimately why we did break up. But what's interesting about that is we broke up because I accused him of cheating and he couldn't believe I would ever have the nerve. He was fully cheating on me. Like, but can you believe that? Like, he broke up with me. Like, how embarrassing is that? I shouldn't even tell you that. But you guys know that story. I was a wreck. Not handled that well. I was not doing well. It was a really, really rough time. All right? But it was only then that I had the confidence to... Bring the mom thing back up again. So we're on the phone and I'm hysterically sobbing and I'm asking him, how could you do this, blah, blah, blah. Do you need to be institutionalized, etc." And I ask him, 
also, why did you fake the death of your family? And of course, he denies it. And I then tell him, I've been talking to your mother. <gasps> I had not been talking to his mother, but... Oh Can I just God. tell you that I heard that and literally like, <gasps> you had? <laughs> and I even stopped to text Jesse and be like, oh my God. I didn't even hear her follow up until I rewatched this today. I literally never saw this. I guess I somehow missed it in my, you know, watching it at three in the morning. I never saw this one. Oh my God. I literally went, I was like, she talked to her. Oh my God. What? She never did. But um, I missed that follow up until today. And great move though. That got him. He finally admitted that he did, in fact, fake the death of his mom and his brother. His dad is dead. Not that that's a good thing, but there's one out of three that are dead. The rest are still kicking. So um, I guess it's like a positive. If you think about all his songs about how he like just wishes he could talk to his mom one more time, it's like, call her. <laughs> <laughs> That is diabolical. But that's one of the craziest things that I told you is that interview where it's like, I just, I think about every day if my mom could, if she ever even heard my songs. And then the other interview, it's like, yeah, are you going to make any of these like non-sad songs, Clinton? And it's like, how hard, like, I, oh my God, <laughs> she is ruthless. Like the amount of times it's like, oh, that was a deep cut. So this is like the final part of the like official series, if you will. And then there's one more follow up that we'll watch after. Anyway, it has now been two years since we broken up and he had the nerve to post a TikTok today saying that I cannot let it go. And I just want to go on record and say no fucking shit. <laughs> Apparently his new song comes out on Friday and the man will do anything to get a stream. So honestly, you guys, do him a service. He needs money no. for therapy. <laughs> if you take nothing else away from this story, just know that treating um, underlying mental health conditions is very important because had I known what was wrong with me, I would have never gone near that man to begin with. For context, she um, has diagnosed uh, BPD, borderline personality disorder, and she had oh, not- Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, and she was not diagnosed till after that, so um, that's what she's referring to. But, oh my God, he needs money for therapy, I can't. Um, so then, basically someone says, he clearly doesn't have an accent at all during most of the interview. Zach knew something. Listen to this response, because she has referenced before that they got in this one fight because <laughs> she said Kid Rock was hot. As a joke. <gasps> Ew. As, oh, as, as a, a joke. joke. Okay. And the caption to this is, this was over me saying the words, Kid Rock could get it. She has a recording, so we're about to hear. She basically, I'll let her explain, but it's there's a recording oh at God. the end of this. Because a lot of people ask me, like, well, did his accent ever, like, go in and out? Like, did you ever notice that he, like, didn't have an accent? And truthfully, he never, almost never had the accent with only me, Okay. Like, he would turn it on when my friends were around or when we're at dinner with people or whatever. And I was like, okay, slay. But, like, you know, he's a performance artist. But I didn't really think that much of it because, obviously, like, I'm American. And I just figured, like, he was, like, mirroring me. Sometimes if I felt like he was really being irrational, I would record our arguments because I'd like to show them to him the next day. He knew I did this, by the way. This is not illegal. Um, and you can – there's just – Nothing Australian <laughs> about it. I'll let you be the judge. It's uncomfortable. You can say it to fucking anyone else. You can go with Tana and say it. When I'm in that room, you don't. Because I'm saying it right now, I'm uncomfortable. You want to keep saying I'm, you want to keep saying things I'm uncomfortable about? Keep going. I'm just gonna be like weirded out. I'm gonna be like, oh wow, that's crazy. Something I brought up to my girlfriend that I said was uncomfortable. She doesn't acknowledge it nor respect that I am uncomfortable about it. And she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to stop saying it, even though it doesn't demoralize her personality or her or her value. You literally no, don't even know what it that means. No, it doesn't demoralize your personality. What are you even talking? What what what, what are you talking about? I can't. Here we go. Turn off. <laughs> this is not what demoralizing means. The fact that she literally accused him of not knowing what demoralizing means I, is epic. I know, literally her response, I'm like, oh my God, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for this entire relationship. It's so funny. Again, that was in response to Kid Rock, which is weird. But my personal response to his accent, I think he mostly sounds American. I texted this to Lily. I was like, it does come in and out, whether he's faking it and he's so used to faking it that it sometimes comes in like the Australian. But I did 
also say to Lily, I said more out than in for sure. Like, I don't think it's like, like he definitely sounds more American than not, but he does do weird like twangs here and there. Well, and I think it's funny though, when you notice the ones he does have the twangs on, it's very stereotypical. Like it's a lot of vowels. It's a lot of things that it's like, it would be easier for someone to mimic if they weren't Australian. I heard him do one the other day in something where he literally says, oi. Well, if he's lying, he genuinely has been trying to keep up this lie for years. I would assume that would eventually become part of your- Yeah, I mean like it's, I mean, cause he's doing it to the public too. So it's not like he just like decide That's not exactly, to yeah, he exactly. has to. Since then, she's posted just a few shady, like her singing along to lyrics and stuff. It has blown up. Like literally the there's brand brands commenting on all like all of them also one of the things she mentions is and we touch on in our original episode is the reason she found out that he was lying about so much of the stuff was because after he did a zach sang interview there were comments that started popping up of people being like um i went to high school with him he is not for most That's what, like, like made her aware exactly yeah. and like people were commenting on her tiktoks and stuff but she said that she wakes up one day in bed next to him and he's like losing it telling his manager like he needs to get the Zach Sang interview taken down, which is odd because Zach Sang is his friend. So like, what would possibly be in there that you need the whole interview taken down and that you couldn't ask him personally to take down unless it was to cover up your pathological lies that you had told him as well. I just can't imagine what he's doing now. The damage control, he's trying to like call his label and be like, what just do I do? Just panic. Yeah. Like, I, I would pay so much money to see it. Um, Let's look at the views on this. Literally, the, her li- latest one, it's just her lip singing uh, something in the car. It's 5.8 million. The actual series, all of them have above two five but veer towards more like three million. Oh my god no the first ever one has 8.2 million her oh my actual gosh. first part has 5.9 million like people are eating it up because despite her bringing it up and like we I mean not that we us covering it was a huge like blip on the radar but like a lot of people have covered it at this point and it hasn't it's not a secret like people are talking about it and I think this was the final though push that literally now everyone is seeing it and he had to turn his comments off oh yeah and like I said people are using his song to do it where <laughs> they're just like saying funny shit but using his song which again benefits him yeah in the long run Wait, what is a Glenn Powell joke? What is that? Mean? Oh my God. Okay, so this is just a funny aspect. So I see Tana stitch his video <laughs> or duet his video and she's just cracking up to it. But this duet, which people pointed out at least for a while, I, maybe not anymore. She had far surpassed any views he had gotten on it. And it's literally her just laughing silently. So I see Tana post this and the top comment I see is... If only he knew Brooke Schofield is dating Glenn Powell now. And it has 30,000 likes. And I was like, is she? That was my reaction because I'm like, Brooke's hot. He's hot. And that would, I I could actually definitely see that. Then um, I also see a comment that says, weird of him to address this when she started dating Glenn Powell, but okay. And I'm sitting here being like, oh my God, Brooke, well done. Like upgrade, definitely. Was it misinfo? It is a fucking joke, but it's so funny because first of all, I would absolutely die. I think I would rather see Glenn Powell's reaction to all of this than Clinton's at this point (laughs) because of like Glenn Powell's like people know who he is now. He's definitely a successful actor, but also like he does not get the engagement that Brooke and Tanner are getting on this stuff. So like the fact that comments about him are getting 30,000 likes. Then I find out that apparently this is a clip from their podcast where I'm like, oh, it's not true. I was like sort of seeing a guy that I was like obsessed with (laughs) and he was not obsessed with me back, okay? And, I, you know, like, we were spending a lot of time together and stuff, and I knew he was seeing other people. I'm loving these past tense. And I was jealous. <laughs> I was very jealous, so I was like, you know what? I want him to think I'm seeing other people, but can't just be anyone. Of course not. You know what I mean? So <gasps> I was like, <laughs> who, who could it be? And I noticed that there was some speculation after I had been talking about a guy I was seeing on Cancelled, mm-hmm. people were speculating that it might be Glenn Powell. <laughs> oh, and actually, do you... Oh, my God, this is even funnier. I'm just realizing. Um, So, uh, you wouldn't have ever met her. Do you know my friend Laura Quinn? She, she used to be a dancer. I mean, she still is a dancer, but, like, I've known her for years at this point. She's, like, the celebrity Pilates instructor. <laughs> what? She, okay. she works for Aloe, and she is the instructor for, like, 
Brooke. Glenn Powell. Like uh, so many people that it's just like every time I open her story, I'm like, bitch, who are you? So actually that's hilarious because they both go to the same Pilates thing. Not together, but that isn't an, an unrealistic jump that people would have maybe thought that they met. <laughs> And the best things ever happened to you. I am here so to iconic. I never wanted to shut that rumor down because why the fuck would I shut that rumor down? <laughs> yeah, I correct. let everybody believe it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it is. Okay. Um, Glenn Powell, keep, I'm like, keep scrolling, seriously. <laughs> it seemed like almost believable because obviously the Aloe connection, he's at Aloe every day. We have like so many Jake of the same Shane. mutual friends. So it's like, it makes sense that I could have possibly met and had some sort of relationship with Glenn Powell. However, I've literally never met him in my entire <laughs> life. And Period. so one yeah. day I have the idea. I'm like, what if I just went ahead and changed Paige's number in my phone <laughs> to Glenn Powell and I gave her the reins, let her call me at her own leisure. And boy, did she take advantage of it. I was getting FaceTimes from Glenn Powell at 2 a.m. <laughs> at one point, I felt like a jealous boyfriend. Oh, I'm like, why aren't you calling me back? <laughs> and like, I, I and really I'm like, got into character. And I'm like doing this with my phone, like texting Glenn Powell. Like, that's not Glenn Powell. <laughs> like purposefully moving your phone to the side to yeah. see or, or, or the guy Or looks. just letting it. So she has basically fueled this rumor just to make this guy jealous that she was seeing. And to that, I say, oh, my God, that's fucking hilarious wait so then that even carried its way to clinton Kane. well so then it kind of blew up brooke reposted this because then i had searched their names i was like oh my god is she dating glenn paul not i hadn't seen this one first i'd seen the comments and then i searched their names and see this it's oh, billy eilish birds of and photos. it's just photoshop Stop. pictures of them that are not great no they're really bad <laughs> and it's so funny because that video had like five hundred thousand views like oh it, my god because she reposted it but so I thought that was hilarious just because you know that you probably at least for a second probably did see one of those and thought, thought it was true. Would, yeah. yeah. It made sense to me. But so as for his reactions, I swear we're almost done. Um, as I said earlier, he had initially really like heavily filtered the comments. There was like 20 comments maybe when there would have been, I mean, at this point, thousands because of Brooke. But even if it was just for his music, normally I feel like there would have been more than that. Some of them had one, some of them had three and it was hilarious to me. But when I woke up this morning, I looked and they are all off. And to my knowledge, he has not directly addressed it. But I came across this TikTok of someone saying that this was on his story, and I know that you will really love it. It's a comment that someone had posted. Oh, God, and said, I've seen Just this. curious, seen could this. you say my name? And he says, Kimberly, I sound so American. Oh, my God, I need to go back to Australia and get my life together. Kimberly. That is so, so, and I mean so giving Hilaria Baldwin that it's not even funny. Oh, my God. It's like, how do you say? How do you say in English, uh, or oh, like a cucumber? I have seen two things after this whole Clinton Kane thing. One was someone that went to his concerts, and I have all of these favorited. So, well, we actually can't put the concert one in. We'll like put it on screen, but we can't show the music because it's him at concert. But basically, this person said that it was the worst concert they'd ever gone to, that literally the entire time he was talking about how much he hated being there and how much he hated the city and how much he just Weird thought it was like bullshit and he was never coming back. And the girl said so many people left because I mean, you're like just dogging the fucking city you're in. And it was just like, you see kind of his attitude in the video, but you don't see him say that. So, you know, that could be false. I don't know. But I saw that. And then I also saw not Zach saying, is it Dave? The guy that's like, does the show with him? What is his name? Yeah, Do you know? Uh, I don't know, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And he had specifically told Clinton Kane that his accent was getting like he sounded American. And then Clinton Kane said, damn it, I need to work on that. I don't want to sound like you guys, is what he said. Keep going. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, mate. Love you. <laughs> that was the strongest your accent's been since you've been in here. Yeah. It sounded pretty American until you just said sorry. Really? Mate. Yeah. <sighs> Damn it. You gotta fix that. I have to. I have to go back to Australia and hibernate over there. Yeah, you don't want to sound like us. I don't. No, it's, it's the last thing I want. I agree. Oh. It's atrocious. No, I actually do love American accents. So that's basically like, there's been a lot of people coming out and he reposted it, by the way, that Dave guy. And he said, I don't remember saying this, but it's very awkward. Oh my God. Well, so one more um, promo thing. He posts a, another promotional TikTok about this song because he's posted fucking 50. And... It is a video he's taken of his computer screen, which notably is so dirty. And I'm like, it would be. You could have given a wipe down, a little wipe Literally, down. Literally, I'm like, I'm looking at my laptop screen right now. 
it's not the cleanest. But if I was to film it for a video to promote my song, I would give it a little wipe down first. Mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. so on brand for him. I'm like, you would have just a dirty computer screen. <laughs> um, but notably on screen, it says directed and edited by my ex-girlfriend. Obviously, this is not Brooke, but I feel Brooke, like he no. was trying to do that because that's like how he was building momentum for the song. But um, lastly, another girl has come out. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. And I thought it was weird because I was like, girl, how are you just finding out about this? Like, there, it's, there's been waves that I feel like you would have definitely, like, gotten this served on your For You page. But she shows receipts. Her name is uh, Lindsay, and she's based in L.A. She's a lifestyle, beauty, and skincare, and health and wellness influencer. And the first few she posts are just, like, to music, and it's her being like, I'm a victim of Clinton Kane, blah, blah. But she does show um, receipts of their DMs, and it's so, again, just very on brand for him, where it's like, let me take you out, let me take you to dinner, blah, blah. And it does show that, like, they hung out, and the timelines, she posted this because the timelines overlap when he was with Brooke. So it's him just being, like, super flirty, and like, oh, I'll come get you, let's get dinner, let's blah, 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 blah. do you wanna hang? And then eventually it's them hanging out after he gets to her house and then he texts her the next day and it's like, I had a great time with you tonight, love. And that's also notably after the last time that this kind of was in the cycle of trending stuff. Two other girls, I think, that we had watched had come forward. One that had dated him and said that he trauma dumped, like, first date. <laughs> and then another one where it was, like, a friend of a girl that had hung out with him and he was, like, aggressively trying to make out with her at dinner and stuff. Yeah. No shortage of cheating allegations and just gross uh, pathological liar douche behavior, but that's pretty much where we're at now. Always fun to visit our good friend Clinton Kane. Well, well, well. Hi, girlies. Um, it appears that Clinton wasn't ready for his whole story to go up in flames without a fight, at least. It's definitely still in flames. It's on fire, burning very badly. But um, anyway, he has indeed released a statement. Naturally, it was not on his TikTok or any of his social media because he chose to release it through his reps, aka definitely a PR team that concocted what I'm about to read you because I don't think he wrote it. And where did he release this statement? Rolling Stone of course. Yeah, in the statement he addresses, if you want to call it that, a few of the lies that Brooke has revealed, and by a few I mean a couple, because he only addresses two. First off, um, in regards to his accent and being from Australia, Kane's rep says that he lived in Australia, quote, for a time as a child, and, quote, considers Australia to be home. It also says that he, quote, has never been disingenuous about this. Okay, so maybe he doesn't address the accent, but while we're on the topic, I did find him answering a question about his accent in an interview back in 2021, and I found his answer, you know, interesting. He's asked, being from Perth, Australia, how did that play into your life and career? I know you moved everywhere. And his response is, that accent helps a lot, gets me into a lot of places. I bet it does, Clinton. Anyway, um, back to the statement. The rep goes on to say that the quote-unquote mother he referred to in the interview was saying was actually, quote, a very special mother-like figure in his teenage years who sadly passed. Not his biological mother, as was assumed. As was assumed? Something tells me that Clinton has not gone back and watched both of his Zack Sang interviews like I have because assumed is crazy considering what he says. I, I think I already played the clips at this point. Assumed is crazy. The statement goes on to say that Clinton regrets the way this devastating news was communicated at the time. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it continues. Clinton genuinely felt that he had lost an irreplaceable mother figure. Clinton was, and largely is, estranged from his immediate family. Regrets the way this devastating news was communicated at the time? Is that code for he regrets framing it in a way that was false and was gonna blow up in his face later? Because, I mean, I would regret that too. Um, also, was and largely is estranged from his immediate family? What the fuck does that mean? And speaking of immediate family, um, awfully convenient that this statement makes absolutely zero mention of his brother and father. You know, the other two family members that he tragically lost within the span of a year. I mean, I, I know why he didn't mention his brother, considering he's very much alive and I've seen him on Facebook. But um, I think it's that even Clinton knows it would be a bit weird for him to switch up his story now and say that maybe, I don't know, he was referring to a brother-like figure and not his actual brother, like he has led his fans to believe. And speaking of, I wonder how they ever would have arrived at that conclusion. Could it be that he referred to the passing of his family members by saying, and I quote, I lost three people from my family in the span of a year? That's right here in his own handwriting. So um, that's a choice. 
So best not to mention them at all, I guess. It appears that Clinton's team also provided what I assume is probably the same statement to people. It says Kane and Schofield had a brief three month relationship over two years ago and that her recent comments regarding Kane are untrue. Which ones? All, all of them? I'm pretty sure none of them are untrue, but okay. And what would possess Brooke to apparently put out these lies about him? Well, according to his rep, the public rehashing of these details is only an attempt to bring attention and focus on Brooke's podcast at the expense of tearing down another former boyfriend, a tactic she's become known for. Another former boyfriend? Does he really think he's doing something here? He's like, she also exposed Matt Reif for cheating on her with like five other girls at once. Interesting choice here. Probably because he um, relates to him because he was also cheating on her with multiple girls. But anyway, um, in response to that, a rep for Brooke told People her response was, and I quote, ha 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 ha. She posted that on her Instagram story and added that it seemed like it was the only appropriate response. And I think we can all agree with that. Lucky for us, she posted a couple TikToks as well uh, to give a full response to Clinton's statement. Right, guys, I don't know how much more I want to talk about it. Um, I mean, your videos are cracking me up, but I don't want to venture into like tacky territory. However, we do of course have to address the statement that Clinton put out because it is so funny. I would like to take it piece by piece, okay? Starting with Clinton Kane and Brooke Schofield had a brief three month relationship over two years ago. Um, to which I reply, why on earth would I want people to think I dated you longer than I did? Next we have Brooke's recent comments regarding Clinton are untrue. Um, no, they're fucking not. All right, this part is like one of my favorite elements of the story, which is like the random side quest he decided to go on when people started finding things out, where he made up an imaginary new woman who was a mother figure to him, who was actually the one who had died, okay? The rep says that the mother he referred to in the interview with Sang was actually a very special mother-like figure in his teenage years who sadly passed, not his biological mother, as was assumed. Which, what do you mean, was assumed? Like, girl. Clinton genuinely felt like he had lost an irreplaceable mother figure, okay? This might hold up for the Zach Sang interview, but I was his girlfriend, okay? I was getting stories from like the time he was born to the present, okay? With names, all right? Which is how I looked his little mom up to begin with, okay? There was one mom, all right? It's the same mom I heard about every single day and that is the one he killed off and that is the one who is chilling in Brunei. And this is not even the most concerning part of the statement, okay? She also uh, adds a little more to her response to the whole she was doing this for attention for the podcast. And she also provides us with some receipts to show that she has actually declined to comment or say anything about this multiple times and has even ghosted Rolling Stone before. You know, Rolling Stone, the one he gave his statement to? Ironic. Now, I want to talk about the part of the statement that really got my little feet kicking. Okay. It reads, the public rehashing of these details is only an attempt to bring attention and focus on Brooke's podcast at the expense of tearing down another former boyfriend, a tactic that she has become known for. But if they had done any research at all, they would know that the canceled podcast listeners have known this lore all along, okay? I brought this to my TikTok audience for one reason and one reason only, okay? It is because that man called me a yapper. I mean this in the most humble way possible, truly. Like I really truly do canceled amasses more listeners in one singular week than Clinton Kane has in an entire year. I'm sorry. This article was published in Rolling Stone. Okay, Rolling Stone, who actually reached out to me in 2023, all right? Several times. They were already publishing a story on Clinton, okay? It was already a thing. People knew about it, okay? Ultimately, I decided I wanted no involvement. As you can see here, I feared for his mental health, okay? I didn't want anything to do with that because I couldn't do it in good conscience. They even offered to let me do it anonymously and I ghosted them, okay? So please, Clinton's publicist, if you exist and if you are listening, please, please help that man. I have nothing to gain, I'm embarrassing myself. And lastly, in a now deleted TikTok that I desperately wish was all still up, um, but I do have a part of, she reveals a fun little story about how one time apparently Clinton's mom showed up at one of his shows. And based on this story, I'm guessing it was unannounced. His mom showed up to one of his shows. Showed up to one of his shows. And he created this extreme extravagant story about how he had a therapist 
who became so involved in his life that she started to act as though like she was his mother and it creeped him out and he had to break up with his therapist or whatever it was and that's the story that he told so he pretended that his his literal mother was a psychotic deranged therapist that was boasting around saying that she was his mother and in light of all of this um one of the girls that came out back when brooke was talking about this in february or march she has come out and added some more fun information about clinton what's crazy about this whole brooke and clinton thing is that clinton just didn't know when to stop lying after he was caught the timeline went me and clinton i think i was like 18 years old at the time and then brooke and clinton dating which he would call and text me while they were dating at the time which i didn't know because obviously he didn't tell me he had a girlfriend they broke up which i obviously also didn't know because i didn't even know he had a girlfriend in the first place after they broke up he started talking shit about her he tried telling me that brooke was stalking him that he was so scared that his friends allegedly were so scared for him and that he literally had to go to the police he was like becca i had to get the police involved like she was so like he's saying he's scared to go anywhere because she's so crazy allegedly he said that he had to get a restraining order against brooke allegedly which obviously isn't true he's saying all this with his chest while him and brooke are still in contact people like this are just addicted to lying like he was caught already by brooke but he still had to like Tell me, who didn't even know Brooke at the time, that it was a lie. At that point, people that are saying those lies believe it themselves. They've told these lies over and over so much that they believe it in their own head. Allegedly. And then she goes on to um, reveal even more. I was going to shut my mouth about Clinton Kane after my video yesterday, but I've received some interesting messages in my inbox. She says, hi, Becca. I wanted to let you know I was part of Clinton's secret fan club Discord thing, which by the way, was allegedly filled with a lot of underage fans of Clinton. She said he would stream and call people without their knowledge and that he actually recorded some of his phone calls with me. By the way, is literally illegal to record a phone call with someone in the state of Nevada, which is the place that he lived. On these phone calls, I would be talking about things like my father who actually died when I was young. I'd be talking about things that are really difficult for me. I'd be crying on these phone calls. We had very close, intimate phone calls because we were like seeing each other. So obviously you don't assume that someone that you're seeing and talking to on the phone is streaming it to thousands of people. Allegedly. And then she says, and how you kept trying to kiss him. I'll tell you the story she's referring to. I was 18 or 19 at a party in LA and I bumped into Clinton and we had already been flirting with each other and been seeing each other before at this point, allegedly. And allegedly, he was flirting with me at this party and allegedly was talking about me because he kept pointing at me and we kept locking eyes across the room and all these things, right? And we had been texting during this time. As I'm leaving, I go to give him a kiss goodbye and he goes, sorry, I can't. I'm like here with a girl. I didn't see him there with the girl, so I went, oh my God, sorry. While he was literally allegedly dating someone, he calls me the next day and is like, I'm so sorry. I like didn't want her to see me kiss you, but I like really wanted to kiss you like cringe stuff. Allegedly. I was literally like, oh, I'm happy you're seeing someone. Like, do you really like her? And his response was literally, yeah, we like don't really get along or anything, but the sex is good. So, and I was like, oh, okay. Allegedly. So yeah, that's what she's talking about there. She says that even people on the live stream were telling him to stop live streaming because it was morally wrong what he was doing obviously and then she says that clinton would do this stuff all the time on his discord and literally stream him calling people personal phone calls with people without their knowledge which is illegal once again illegal but it's also awful to think little old 18 year old me thought that I had someone that I could relate to that had their father pass away, that went through traumas like I do, which all of that was a lie, but I thought that I had someone that I could actually talk to and confide in during a time in my life that I thought that I had nobody. So the fact that he went on Discord and streamed it and talked about it and made a mockery of it is mad and is so sad and frustrating and ugly to do. And then she said he'd tell us a lot about you and how you guys used to hook up and had plans or even talked about moving in together in New York. Which also isn't true. So how about he can be a pathological liar, allegedly, whatever the hell. He can do, he could want attention and seek it however he wants to. But don't disrespect people that have actually gone through shit. Allegedly. Yeah, so I think we can all agree that um, Clinton Kane sucks. Anyway, I think that's pretty much all we've got for now, which honestly is quite a bit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this episode's going to be four hours already, so I'm just going to end it here and um, toss back to us. Bye.
Okay, so this next topic is surrounding someone by the name of Lila, who is a trans woman and an influencer that used to, it actually like weirdly ties in, used to be very good friends with Brooke and Tana, but they have recently denounced her. I know there's a lot of drama there. Some are rumors, some are not. Maybe one day we can get into it, but point being, they do not fuck with her anymore. And also she has been outed for scamming a lot of people. I know I literally just saw one on my For You page where she like scammed someone on Depop for $80. That was a fan of hers. That's the thing. A lot of like, not like thousands of dollars. It's like, she said she was going to send someone something. She didn't. She like charged someone for something. She didn't. Yeah, but that's not even so much. I mean, yes, that's a problem, obviously, because you're scamming your fans. But the worst part is she ended up going on the canceled podcast, belittling this fan and being like, fine, have your fucking $80 back. And then allegedly DMing him and being like, take your TikTok down because he was calling her out. It was this whole thing, whatever. Anyway, lots of drama with this person, but needless to say, the internet doesn't have great things to say about her because she seems to be kind of, you know, potentially a very vapid influencer that is a nasty person. Also, just, I feel like this paints a good picture. Um, I saw her response to a bunch of accusations once where she said that stupid line that's like, if you have a problem with me, then text me. And if you can't text me, that means you don't know me well enough to have a problem with me. That's and then she goes on to say works. that the only reason people are talking about people badly is because they're jealous of them, they want to be them, mm, and blah, mm. blah, like stuff like that. that. So that's the kind of person she yeah. is. We don't want to be Lila. I mean, I, before the situation had happened that we're going to talk about, I already knew she would not be someone that I would invite to my wedding. But fast forward to why we're talking about her, Alex Warren and how do you say her name? She goes by Cover, but apparently it's because she's from Hawaii and I'm not even going to remotely try and say this oh, name, wow. but this is her full name. Okay. We'll just... Put it on screen. Yeah, we're, we are not going to embarrass ourselves. But apparently she's from Hawaii. And actually they first, very quick backstory that we won't get into because there's drama there too. They were both in the Hype House. That's how a lot, most people know them. Okay. And Alex was like one of like the founders of the Hype House, I guess. But that was after um, they had met a couple years earlier in 2018 because he saw her on a mutual friend Snapchat and was like, oh my God, she's gorgeous. I need to talk to her. And then they started talking when she lived in Hawaii and it was like long distance for a few months. And then eventually he started surprised her and met her and they were dating but then also it came out later by a friend that was the one that he found her through the mutual friend snapchat that accused um her of apparently she had been like dating someone else the entire time oh, too. No. And, like it was very big drama filled thing that is unimportant because now they're married and happy so and i did see his vows to her and they were beautiful and absolutely did move me and i i should uh, yeah i did i cried as well so we're not here to speculate on the validity of their marriage maybe another day but not today oh no no, no. and i don't think there's anything invalid about their marriage it just started on some rocky which happens territory. to a lot of people but so honestly that was 2018 2019 they found the hype house he mentions in his vows that a, he had been homeless for a bit because his parents passed away a while ago and even before they passed away he didn't have like a great relationship with them so i guess rather than being like oh he's homeless she literally lived in a car with him for multiple oh, months wow. and like was like supportive and then he finally like was making enough on social media that he was able to um get an apartment and then the rest is history. So they've been together now a long time. It's 2024, so six years. Yeah, they get engaged New Year's 2022 and then the wedding just happened last week. Yeah, people were describing this as like the TikTok royal wedding. All that was yes. being served to me on my free page was different kind of points of view of their wedding. And I was like, who are these people? I've literally never seen any of them a day in my life, but people really seem to love their wedding and want to know everything about it. Well, in question though for you, because I was seeing a ton of content from it too, but it was all from her and Alex. It wasn't from like a bunch of random other people. Oh yeah, yeah. It was mainly him and his is uh this is another thing which is fine and you know what slay on but the majority of what I saw was him promoting his song, very Clinton Kane-esque, very like every single TikTok was that song and he released it on their wedding day. And it was, you know, go off King. Yeah, an interesting choice maybe you could say, but also like whatever, I, that's fine. Yeah. I also didn't know he was a musician until like very recently. He's really good. Yeah, no, I, I think the song's great. It was just an inch, like I was being served his song non-fucking-stop. So that was the main part of it. But anyway, so I knew the wedding was happening and then I didn't know when it was happening, but then I found out after because literally it was like wedding content song, Lila ruined the wedding. Those Bows. were like the two oh. separate things. I got well, served. Yeah. <laughs> like circling back to Lila and why she comes into play here. So apparently their wedding, they had a lot of influencers come, which I noticed James Charles was there and I was a like, fucking oh, a. 
anyways. Can people stop inviting James Charles to places? I heard he did her makeup, which not making it any more reasonable than No, why the there, fuck but, would you have um, James Charles do your makeup on your wedding day? I can't. I can't with that. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, also Charlie D'Amelio was there, Markel Washington. I don't know who David Kushner is, but apparently he a lot of a musician that was there. And Lila was there. Yeah. Well, we know that because essentially what Lila was uh, most recognized for at this wedding was making it all about her fucking self. Now, I do want to say really quickly, when you are having a wedding, the people whom you invite, no matter what you put on the invite, because allegedly what was on the wedding invite, I haven't seen it, but it says wedding invites had noted that it was a device free wedding. There were also signs around the wedding venue, unplugged ceremony. Yeah, this is a little, I don't know who's where this came from, but it's someone holding up a little sign that says, we invite you to be fully present with us at our ceremony. Kindly turn off all cell phones and cameras. And a big reason why people do this at their weddings is because if you've ever seen people who hire photographers and don't do this, people's phones will be in the fucking way of the picture. And that's yes. super super annoying. So totally well, understand Well, and this. it's for like shitty quality views that like no one, we, we don't want your amateur vlog style. It's giving we want me the taking pictures of 4th of July fireworks when they look like absolute ass cheeks on my phone. <laughs> like why do we even continue to do that? I digress. What happened next is a series of TikToks that I, and vlog, there was a vlog as well, that were posted by Lila that were very much not abiding by these rules, number one, but number two, even if they didn't have an unplugged rule, it would still be insensitive to wedding conduct. Like, I feel like you would not be following basic social rules at a wedding if you did what she did. When I saw all of this, I was thinking like, have I vlogged at weddings? Oh my God. No, honestly, there have been two weddings I've been to that, yes, I actually, maybe a third, but not even really. So basically, if I've ever quote unquote vlogged a wedding, it's that I'm vlogging up until I get there. Once I'm there, it's not a vlog scenario. It's like a I pulled my camera out to like get a couple of videos as anyone would at a wedding. And then I like threw them into a montage later. They always stop pretty much when we get to the wedding part because like that's where like you're not supposed to be like, oh my God, look at me. So well, a lot of people, I think their instinct, especially if it's not an unplugged wedding is to take pictures of like the beautiful views or certain things like that. Or if the bride is already there, you want to take a picture of them. I understand that if they're not like explicitly instructing you to not do that. If I but, ever saw that it was like, do not take your phones yeah, out. That would be a different story. You wouldn't find it within 50 feet. But no. what people are having the <laughs> issue with is that Lila very much said, this wedding is my backdrop, period. Let me say real quick. Like, and she literally got in the middle of the fucking aisle. We'll watch right now. So she has TikTok videos, but then she also, or she had a TikTok video and then she also posted a YouTube vlog, which is now deleted, but there was a sped up version somewhere. And then now we have a not sped up version. We like adjusted the audio a little bit and I cut off the whole beginning part because it starts with them like going out to like eat and like them driving there. So we, I just cut the wedding part. So here is her TikTok. And also, I just want to point out that it's not even just that she posted it. It's that she posted this before they posted any footage of their wedding. That was people's biggest quarrel with her. Yeah. She must have posted kidding? this at like, the, like, reception. That's unreal. And especially, like, remember, this is, like, a highly looked forward thing on social media. So people are dying to look at the wedding, what was Cover wearing, all of that. And then Lila's like, okay, I'll show you. It's like, we didn't actually, we didn't want it from you. Seriously crying. Mr. and Mrs. Hughes. So very short, 22 second TikTok, but here, let's take a look at the vlog that she's shamelessly promoting with this. So it was two times speed. I didn't slow it down to completely normal because we still like get to the point, but um, I made it so the audio pitch should be okay. Yeah. So this is where like they showed like them getting in the car, driving there. It's her and someone named Stassi, not like Stassi, the one- Kylie that Jenner's friend. Is yeah, 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 but some other person named Saucy, who also has gotten a lot of shit because she also posted stuff on TikTok that was oh. before anyone else had. Our wedding walk. We made it. Yeah, yeah. Mechanical wedding, but like that. I'm seriously crying. Can't even hear what they're saying. Oh 
Thank you. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Hughes. Oh, wow. I wonder if that's my daddy for that. Oh, I care about all. I'm a girl. They don't want to talk to you all. I'm a girl. They don't want to talk to you all. They don't want to talk to you all. They don't want Okay, this was a big thing. So that's Stassi, I believe, but there's a clip right after it of Lila rolling Lila around in a fucking wedding veil. Notice Cover's not there. Yeah, well, so, and also um, our researcher pointed out that it almost looks like the dress and every, or the veil and everything was like set up almost like for a photo kind of opportunity, right. maybe. Like it looks like it was like kind of draped. And this is what Lila chose to do. Guys, I'm heading up the bed. Okay, another angle. I'm sitting here with Cover's veil. Honestly, it's an artifact, but it's not time for this bad bitch. I'm not getting married, so I'm gonna bring the dog out. Okay, well, I'm gonna Basically, that's pretty much it. Shows like them dancing the wedding, whatever. Also, crucial note, she showed a lot of like walking down the aisle, like moments that were very like- Yeah, special. I'm sure that Cover and Alex probably would have been the ones to want to post about. However, but I will say, if you are going to be, and I'm not saying they deserved that, I, I want to be very clear, but if you are friends with vapid ass influencers such as Lila and James Charles, who's not just vapid, but he's a alleged P word, not alleged because we've seen everything. It's also notable to point out that like James and like Charlie D'Amelio, like they're a bigger influence. Like Lila doesn't have that many followers. Well, that's why she was posting it to try to gain something exactly. off of this because exactly. I'm like, so it wasn't even you. just like, you invited influencers, what do you expect? It's like, no, no, you invited influencers like Lila. Yes, I think that them inviting Lila and them inviting James Charles are problematic for separate reasons, for sure. But how are you gonna invite vapid ass influencers and then be shocked and just be like, why would they post that? I mean, I get it. It's still fucked up. Lila's an asshole for doing this. And at the same time, I'm like, why did you invite someone who's like a fucking scammer, has a horrible reputation, and then be like, you acted and horribly being like, like a, a social wedding? climber too. Yeah, absolutely yeah. being a social climber for sure. It seems a little weird, but maybe they were trying to be nice. I don't know, I feel like your wedding's not a time to be nice. I feel like a wedding's a time to do what you need to do. To give dress codes, perhaps. <laughs> oh God. It is just, it, and not, this is not giving James any credit or anything or anyone else, but like the fact that like, they didn't have to worry about those kind of people that do seem to post a lot of stuff. That it's like, no, no, it was Lila because she wanted to get more followers. But so then after all this, like a day goes by and this TikTok in particular goes pretty viral. Mostly because Alex and Cover both commented on it and reposted it. So let's watch it first. It's from someone named Maddie. Actually, at your wedding, you can do whatever you want to do. It's your day. It is about you. So you can invite who you want. They can do whatever they want as long as you're okay with that sort of behavior. But my girlfriend said this yesterday and I fully stand by it. If somebody makes a vlog about my wedding, like a YouTube vlog about my wedding, I don't, I, I don't, I, why would you do that? It's a wedding. It's not a theme park. Like maybe be in the moment like a little bit. Imagine you don't get to talk to bride and grooms for that long at a wedding. They're usually off in a corner and everybody's coming up to them. They get like five minutes max with each person until they ultimately go decide who they want to party with. Cause again, it's a, it's their day. Imagine it's your turn to go talk to this bride and groom. Oh my God, celebrating your love. And you're like, wait, hold on. Let's, let's vlog. Let's vlog! I just, I genuinely have, been, I've been seeing way too many vlogs of Alex and Cover's wedding. Happy for you. Marriage is beautiful. The vows, I cried. Me and my girlfriend both sobbed like little bitches, but vlogging is crazy. Like, vlog. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. And you could be okay with people vlogging at your, your wedding. Am I wrong? Um, so Alex comments on this. This is a very valid, all caps, take with a wide eyed emoji. That has 224,000 likes. And then Cover commented, period, with 224,000 likes too, basically. So it seems like they agree. And I think it's wild to have done that when again, it's not like, oh, we assumed you wouldn't do it. No, it's like they explicitly asked people not to do it. 
Right. That's, and they did. that's where I draw the line because it's like, yes, they're influencers and it's kind of, why would you invite Lila to begin with? But if you have signs fucking everywhere, explicitly being like, be a normal human, don't put, put away your phone, we're getting married, and you don't do it, you're just a fucking asshole, period. And then you post before they do? Yeah. Like, the levels of audacity sure. are unmatched. But so then everyone is talking about it. Another day goes by, People even comes out with an article about it. In response to the People article, that is when Lila has issued an apology video. I have not seen this, so this will be my live reaction. Wait, also the People article, the title is Influencer Faces Backlash from Fans and the Couple After Filming and Posting a Vlog from Their Wedding Day. All right, y'all, let's talk. Okay, I just wanna start this video by saying yes, I was personally invited by Alex and Cobra to their beautiful wedding this last weekend. Yes, I chose to drive four hours there because of course okay, we need to celebrate not that literally far. the most perfect couple ever. And then unfortunately, I vlogged it and posted it and y'all are very, very upset. So I just wanna talk about it. I didn't drive three hours to like record their vows and disrespect anybody. So if y'all think that, if Cobra and Alex think that, honestly from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. That was not my intention. I drove three or more what? hours. Why are we stressing the time? Like, that's not that far. <laughs> Chill the fuck out. To celebrate Alex and Cobra, and I was there for them and them only. And you guys know me. I will literally vlog my experience at Starbucks or, like, LAX. <laughs> that doesn't it excuse it. What the fuck? <laughs> this wasn't a Starbucks, you bitch. Like, are you kidding? Genuinely, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. If I offended anybody with this video, with any of my content, I thought that cute little VHS video of like literally the most beautiful wedding ever would make people so happy. That's my way of showing my love and affection. Oh, Honestly, is, is editing, here? creating content, my experiences, doing things with people that- Girl, you rolling around in her veil and like showing you and like your friend like spinning around. Like this was not like a video for no, that. No, like, at all. To even insinuate that it was like a gift kind it of. It didn't like, show no. it, I don't think. It was kind of freezing. So maybe it did show it, but like she's literally standing in the middle of the aisle, just like looking over her shoulder. Like it, it was all so performative. You cannot say you were just trying to show how beautiful it was. You were trying to show how beautiful you were. And also, I don't think people are saying you only went to vlog. You just took advantage of the fact that you could make content out of it. It is so offensive to the whole world and the millions of people telling me to kill myself online right now, but there is no influencer wedding rule book. Honestly, there was no sign. No one said it was unplugged. Multiple people asked the multiple people in the wedding party, can I post? Is it okay if I post? Everybody said yes. There was multiple other content creators posting. I know you guys saw it. And there was also 40 rows of social media content creator people all taking content. So I was not, I never got an impression. I never got word from anybody. There was never a speech made. I'm sorry. And I, I just was not aware of that. But I do have to say it is very, 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 very tragic that people, you guys, millions of people can't understand that my way of showing gratitude and love for anybody is showing my experiences. Oh, fuck off with that. This is not an apology. No, and I don't know how close she is to Cover and Alex, but why the fuck did she get invited? And if there really was so many rows of influencers, which honestly, it did look like that, why? I'm sorry, but I, I refuse to believe that 50 influencers are the closest people to you in your life. And if so, I have questions because I have so much experience. I mean, they were in the hype house. Exactly. It's not that you deserved that, but it also seems insane that they didn't think this would happen by inviting someone like Lila. It's like, I've been doing this shit for so long on the internet. Keep your influencer circle almost like you need a microscope to see it because the more influencers you invite into your life the more drama social climbing all of that shit you invite into your life and the fact that you would have them on the most special day of your life it's like why did you do it i still think they're a great couple i still think they deserved a beautiful day if that is true what she's saying which it could be a lie she's a fucking scammer it's just weird it's like why have so many influencers there i agree all of it's a little weird not like what did you expect but also like maybe if you didn't want that you should have been like a little more clear it does seem like they did have like it posted places though so like i i think she's kind of uh being a little dishonest about that or just was clueless but True. also yeah. her framing this is like basically this was like her wedding gift and she just wanted to show them she cared bullshit it's mostly you at bullshit. the wedding nobody wants a vlog as a wedding gift like are you joking i didn't really vlog at jocelyn's wedding i filmed like a couple clips that then i included in my vlog that was leading up to jocelyn's wedding which 
at the end of the video, I go, go watch Jocelyn's video about her wedding, which then I edited for her and spent a ton of time because that was one of my gifts to them is like, yes, absolutely. I will edit this for you with the professional footage that they had captured her vlog the what we just watched that was you being like that's how i show i care are you fucking kidding the zoom in of her crying is diabolical that I'm was just for them that. though jesse that's just always how i've been i've always been like into my snapchat i've always had my big ass ipad in seventh grade obviously when you're invited to a wedding people know your personality i was personally invited i was not a plus one something i'll never apologize for is being myself and if i offended <laughs> anybody by doing that i'm so sorry i don't think the millions of people online right now should be worrying about me attending someone's wedding that y'all don't know, bullying me, AKA someone you still don't know, but worry about the like 350 anti-trans laws that are being passed. Oh my, oh fuck oh, off with on. that. I, I'm not even gonna finish this. Like, are you kidding? Wow, that was quite the turnaround, I must say. <laughs> I, that's un, that, that was, was pretty wild. That was a choice. I've heard this said of her, which is interesting that she tied this into anti-trans laws because I have heard it said of her that when she does heinous shit on the internet, she always points to people like, oh, you're transphobic. Oh, you're just doing this because you're against trans people. And even allegedly, I'm pretty sure that that's, I mean, I know that that's what people are at least saying had to do with why her and Tana and Brooke hadn't falling out is because she did something and then like threw right. that into it and had Tana defend her when then that wasn't the case. Yeah. I, I mean, you can be trans and then also just be a bad person and people yeah, can call exactly. that out. In this scenario, you were dead wrong. Regardless of if there was other influencers doing it, they're uh -huh. wrong as well. Yep, we can also correct. say that. But if there were signs posted and you knew, like, I mean, come on, nobody gives a shit if you vlog that's not a gift to anyone but yourself you're the one monetizing off of it you know damn well people were looking forward to that wedding you knew they wanted the povs and uh -huh. you gave it to them. And that's what you wanted. You wanted people to be able to see it on your page first. And there's no excuse around it. The fact that she tied into anti-trans no, that, that was crazy. Wild. Yeah. And I just, the fact that she even ends it also with like, I'm not going to apologize for being myself, but being yourself is being like a vapid ass influencer. And exactly. I'm like, maybe you should apologize for that though. Absolutely. <laughs> the only good way to address this would be to sit down and be like, dude, I completely like got wrapped up in the moment mm -hmm. and like lost my sight of like, this is two people be getting like, married. I was super excited about it like I knew everyone else was and I just like got carried away and I shouldn't have posted no no that's not what she says she says it was like no, her this gift is my to gift to you yeah, like fuck yeah, off with insane. that yeah all in all we do not like Lila Gibney from what I can tell seems like um not someone that I would ever invite to my home my wedding uh birth of my yeah. child none of the above she doesn't seem like she's gonna be your rock if you know what I mean the rolling around the veil is what pissed me off the most I'm like you guys are wearing makeup. Like, are you probably wearing like that shimmer you put on your fucking body? You're rolling all over it. Get the fuck off. I just couldn't get over the fact that she posted before them. Yeah, I can't. I know that they were in the hype house, but guys, you got to move past that. Now oh, you're well, and a also, married couple. Qu quick note apparently, Lila was in team 10 and got kicked out. So it all kind of matches up. Oh, was she? Yeah, and she also had drama with Colt Kerrigan, who also was in team 10 and got kicked out. <sighs> a lot of, a lot what of, what a um, crowd. Yeah, yeah. I, right? I know. Well, that's pretty much it. That's why everyone's pissed at this influencer for uh, making a wedding about herself, as they should be, honestly, regardless of anything you could say about the situation. She's such an asshole for doing this. And like, you're just- And then that response gross. is even more insane. Yeah. Oh no. The end? I can't. But anyway, that is where we will leave you. We are going to skip our We Love the Internet because my tacos came like 30 minutes ago and they're already going to be soggy. And if Clinton I wait took any longer, longer than expected. Yeah, it did. He did. We, we have a lot to say about Clinton King, as usual. That was our We Love the Internet. But anyway- um, um, we'll leave you guys there. If you made it to the end, as always, we appreciate you very much. We hope you had a wonderful weekend and we will see you on Friday. Bye. Cheers.